Let me show you my shirt. It's probably my gayest and most favorite shirt. I wore it to Pride last year. It was awesome. Many compliments. Many compliments. Hey y'all, it's Tori the Grappler here, back with another video. And first, let me say, welcome back. It's been a while. Life got real, but I'm here now. Um, second, let's just say, happy Pride. It's Gay Pride Month, y'all. Um, as most of you should know, June is Gay Pride Month, and not only is it Gay Pride Month, but it is my birthday month. Yes, that is right. My birthday is at the end of this month and I will be turning 29. So it's my last year in my 20s, y'all. But you know what? I've already decided I'm wilding out this year. I need to get out of some comfort zones and just, you know, make it freaking count. <laughs> um, so one of the things we're going to do is we're about to get this channel back going again. So it being Pride Month, I started thinking about me right around the time I first came out. Well, at least came out to myself. And I was thinking like, what did gay baby Tori do? Like, how did I figure out how to be gay? Because I'm in central Florida, kind of rural Claremont. I didn't really see many things gay here. So like everyone else, I turned to TV. So I started thinking like, what shows did I watch when I was a wee baby gay, <laughs> looking for a guide to the gayness. So I came up with four shows that I watched in those early 2000s that were my my guide to gay. Yeah, um, with varying degrees of success, most just a lot of unfortunate hairstyles and clothing options. Okay, the first show I thought about was one that I watched before I even realized like there was some gayness in this body. And that is Degrassi. I, I know I'm not the only person who loved them since Degrassi. The next generation, not that new class bullshit that's going on right now. So for those of you who don't know, Degrassi is this um, Canadian teen soap opera. And you know, they do all the usual stuff. They talk about pregnancy, um, date rape drugs various social anxieties you, you know it, it runs the gambit but right around season like five ish they introduced a lesbian couple which was Paige and alex and it sent my little heart a flutter so i had already been watching for i don't know a couple years now and then they brought this couple on and alex was like the bad girl from like you know the bad part of town and Paige is this preppy cheerleader and they got together and they found love and it just gave me hope. But, um, you know, later seasons, I think Alex became a stripper and Paige kind of got crazy. Yeah, it was good while it lasted. So the second show that I watched, it's of the same vein as Degrassi and that it was on the same channel. It was on, I think, what was Degrassi on Teen Nick? The N? I think it was called The N at this point. Okay, anyway, the second show is South of Nowhere. So this is basically Degrassi with a smaller um, cast and a little bit more dramatic. So it followed this family who, I think they moved from like Ohio or something to LA and it had three kids, um, an older brother named Glenn or something who was like trying to get used to being the new guy in the basketball team. Well, I guess he was a star back home. No one cared about Glenn, Glenn was irrelevant. Um, we had the second person who was Clay. I think it's Clay. And he was the black dude who got adopted into this white family. So, you know, now he's into LA. He's trying to understand his black identity, which probably now I would be more into it than I was then. Even though I said that's why I was in it back then, because I didn't want to tell the real reason I was in it. Because the real reason I was in it is because of um, Spencer, who was this cute little blonde who was figuring out her sexuality and she met Ashley, which I'm starting to see a trend of like these pretty blondes and these dark brunettes from <laughs> Troubled Past. Cause that's basically what's, that's what Ashley was. So they get together and you know, it's all that will they, won't they, a lot of like caressing kiss, like almost kisses, like no, like that. 
So you had Spencer and Ashley, you know, eventually they got together, but I think Ashley was bi. And they did, they kind of played this weird triangle between her, between Ashley, Spencer, and this guy, Aiden. I don't know, he was irrelevant. We don't, we don't care about them. It was always team Ashley and Spencer. Um, and then, oh my God, if y'all haven't seen it, there's this one scene where Spencer's mom catches them. This, you, if you've seen South of Nowhere, it's like one of the most iconic ones. Um, the mom walks in on those two in her bedroom, in Spencer's bedroom, and she grabs Ashley by her hair and is like dragging her down the stairs. Like, get out, get out. And they're crying and hugging. You see Spencer trying to like put her shirt on. It's like, but I love her. Dad, I love her. And then, yeah, oh my God. I'm, I'm gonna have to rewatch that now. But, um, south of nowhere again just good just good lesbian drama just <laughs> so melodramatic and i ate it up with a freaking spoon all right show number three so the third show that i want to say that i watched um okay again another trend is i like soap operas it's a bunch of unnecessary drama what's not to like so it would be all my children which you know r.i.p because it's canceled and <sighs> bianca bianca montgomery so bianca was the lesbian character that they brought on and she was the daughter of erica kane like if you don't know soap operas you need to know erica kane because she was the baddest bitch thus far she was just like pulling rank from day one um susan lucci is that her name yeah anyway so bianca was her daughter who is just oh my god so gorgeous she had this lovely dark hair and she just looked so sweet and innocent and um but yeah she was big okay and now that you think about it like she ran through a lot of girls she had a bunch of girlfriends but you know soap opera people do but when i was watching it she was with um maggie and it was bianca and maggie and maggie did the whole am i gay no but bianca no, let's get together. I'm gonna cheat on you. It was a bunch of bullshit, but um, I, they didn't end up together because like she left and then Bianca came back and she was like married to this girl named Reese. I don't know. I was here for her. I didn't care who she was with because um, Bianca was bomb. Bianca was bae and I'm gonna look her up. She's probably still bae. I see you, Bianca. And show number four, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this show. This is a show that needs no introduction. It's just, I mean, it's the L word. I mean, is there any surprise here? And thinking about it, I think the L word came back out in 2005, which means I was probably 14 or 15. I was way too young to be watching this show but I watched it religiously. I, um, that's back when you couldn't, like the D, I don't think we had DVR yet, that we couldn't record it, but it was on demand. And I remember rushing home on like Monday afternoons to get to my house to watch the L word before my mom got home. Because you know, I don't know if she's gonna, I don't think she's gonna feel about me just watching this. It was pretty explicit. I shouldn't have been watching it. Like with the volume really low down, just like, But um, so the L word for you don't know, it's this show about lesbians in Los Angeles. They're all super femme, they're all rich, and they all got problems. So, you know, you got your Bet and Tina, like the power couple, you got Dana, Alice, and you know, Shane, Ugh, Shane, the original fuck boy. Um, who else was there? Oh, Carmen. Poppy, oh my God, um, Kit, AKA Pam Greer. Pam Greer was on this show, y'all. It was great, but it literally just followed these ladies and all the stuff they went through. They had like a, um, in later season, they had a whole storyline around being gay in the military with, um, what's the girl's name, Tasha, with the whole don't ask, don't tell, which shows you how far we've come. But we will have so much more on the L word coming later because they just revealed that they're doing, um, they're bringing it back, they're rebooting it. I think it's called the L word Generation Q. So hopefully, I think it's from the pictures, it looks like it's gonna be a lot more diverse because let's be honest, it was really just a, it was a bunch of white girls. I mean, still ate up with a spoon, 
Um, I just started rewatching The L Word and I don't think it's going to age well, but I refuse to change my mind that I like it just because it was so iconic at the time. Like it was, it was the show. It was like the show that was showing all the lesbians being together in like various degrees of happy, you know? But it was showing like regular relationships and the whole trials and tribulation and their whole storyline wasn't that they were gay. It was gay women doing things in their life, which was, you know, it was kind of eye opening. It's, it was nice to see because a lot of shows, they don't feature lesbian, gay, LGBTQ individuals at all, unless it was like the, during sweeps or like a very special episode. So it was kind of nice to see a whole show just dedicated to lesbians. So um, it will always have a special place in my heart, regardless of how bad it ages. And I will love Bet Porter. Oh, Helena. Oh my God, I forgot about Helena. <sighs> Helena grew on me, her British accent, her long legs. She was bae too. So yeah, those are the four shows that helped guide baby Tori into gayness. Um, again, like I said, I definitely went through the gambit of like following some of the hair trends, which was, it was a lot of like flat, flat ironed hair, but somehow my mind didn't equate that I'm black. There's only so much flattening you could do to your hair without it start breaking. So yeah, anyways, um, a lot of, oh God. So we don't have time to get into my fashion styles of the 2000s. It was a hot ass mess. That's all you can think of. If you look back enough on my page, you'll see what I'm talking about. But yeah, this is the first Pride video. Um, stay tuned. Next one will probably be my, probably do my coming out story which some of you know, like you never come out just once, you come out multiple times, but we'll do how I came out to my family, my immediate family, so my mom and my sisters, um, with varying degrees of success also. Could have gone better. On my half, I did, I did, I did not come out very well for my family. Props to them, they did, they, they did really well. Um, I might have my younger sister come on <laughs> so she could talk about it too. But thanks guys. So like I said, I promise more videos. We're going to get more videos and I'll talk to y'all later.